Okay, so I <clears throat> told you guys I would make a video of the 2011, in this case, Honda Fit engine. This is the L15A7. I bought this from a junkyard. They told me it was a 2010 with 12,000 miles on it. Um, I paid $1,175 for the complete engine with the starter, the alternator, the wire harness, the factory fuel injectors, which are right there, and the factory coil packs. After getting the engine, I did a little research and I ran this VIN number right here and I was able to find the actual auction online that this car was at. Turns out it's a 2011 with 17,153 miles. So just go over a couple things on the engine. I've been waiting to see one of these things stripped down. I've searched to the end of the internet looking for just a picture of the engine without a bunch of crap hanging off of it. So we'll go through it here. <clears throat> we have an exhaust manifold that's integrated into the cylinder head. So this is the only exhaust port you have, which means you don't have to build four individual pipes, a simple collector to a downpipe, which is great. This is the factory camshaft sensor. We'll be using that. Um, the simple digital systems ECU system does not require a camshaft sensor. Uh, four individual spark plugs, coil on plug. We have a uh, integrated motor mount here in the timing chain cover. This goes on the passenger um, frame pillar on the vehicle. And a uh, belt tensioner, water pump. Keep in mind that this is the intake side of the engine, which on the newer cars, they, this faces towards the radiator. The exhaust manifold is off the back of the car. So if you're standing with your knees to the bumper right now looking down at the engine, this is the front of the engine. Um, we have exhaust ports, or excuse me, intake ports. They have just the slightest little oval shape to them. Here is your VTEC control solenoid and your VTEC pressure sensor. I'm not sure if I'll be making uh, eliminating this or not. It depends on what other everybody else does, I guess. I believe the VTEC kicks in at 5,800 RPMs, which is uh, kind of where everybody's using the takeoff, the RPM for takeoff. Here we have the thermostat housing and your hoses that are going to go to your heater core. I live in Minnesota, and last week we had wind chills with negative 50 degrees, so my airplane is going to have a heater core inside the cabin for good old clean carbon monoxide free heat. Here's your oil filter integrated into the oil pan on this side we have a coolant temp sensor and some more throttle uh, throttle body coolant passages this I'm going to eliminate and redesign it so it's uh, more narrow doesn't stick out as far and uh, I obviously don't need those for liquid cooled throttle body uh, what else do we have here this is where we hook up the fuel it goes to a common fuel rail which fires four individual injectors. There is no flywheel on this right now. Um, the way this engine sits right now is 157 pounds even. There's no oil in it, there's no coolant in it. The starter that goes right in this hole weighs six pounds, 7.2 ounces. And the alternator that goes right here is a big one. It weighs 11 pounds, 7 ounces. I know other people are using uh, a different 40 amp alternator from other type of uh, experimental aircraft. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure as these engines progress with different builders, we'll figure out what uh, alternator that is. Here we have a factory knock sensor. The oil pressure sending unit. I believe this is a PCV valve. One uh, thing that I found here is that when you slide the starter in, its threads are on the transmission end, so you have nothing to bolt the starter to. Well, that's an easy fix. Um, all you have to do is machine up a bung that presses into here with some internal threads on it so your bolt um, can terminate right here with a threaded bung 
uh, pressed in there. Um, there's a lot of talk about turbocharging these engines. <clears throat> I've been uh, doing a little research on that. I grew up beating the hell out of Honda Civics and uh, I think every time I drive my cars they're at red line. I just kind of, that's kind of the way I drive here and there. This engine, if you follow videos on YouTube of these little whippersnappers running around with uh, aftermarket turbo kits on here, there's three companies that make turbo, mark, uh, turbo kits for the Honda Fit. Um, <clears throat> if you want to get serious about boost or if you just want to build a bulletproof motor, JE Pistons makes uh, 9 to 1 compression pistons for this. So does CP Pistons. Um, they also make a 9 to 1 compression piston. Brian Crower. Um, offers connecting rods that are rated at 150 horsepower per cylinder. Obviously we don't need to experience uh, cylinders uh, horsepower like that, but all those names, CP Pistons, JE Pistons, and Brian Crower are highly respected in the, in the racing market. There's videos of these things online uh, running 260 wheel horsepower with turbos, which puts it about 300 horsepower at the motor. I have a couple buddies who have Honda Civics uh, that have 460 some horsepower to the engine on their four cylinder. I worked for Toyota for seven years so I have a lot of experience with Toyotas and Supras, turbochargers, that type of stuff. There's a buddy of mine that has 740 horsepower to the wheels on his six cylinder um, Toyota Supra. And the only thing that's limiting him from going further is that his turbo can't breathe good enough through four inch exhaust. He's getting compressor surge. So these little motors are bulletproof. If you were to take this oil pan off, the entire crankshaft main bearing, I guess, uh, caps is a fully girdled system. So it's one big main cap. These engines are bulletproof. Um, there's already companies that make a turbo manifold so it comes off with a turbo manifold here it comes about this far and then there's a uh, I think it's a T25 or a T3 T4 flange built into it stainless steel there's tons of tons and tons and tons of aftermarket stuff for these engines they're bulletproof um, motor mount points <clears throat> this is a, a motor mount point here when it was in the vehicle I'm guessing this would come to the front uh, crossbar of the suspension cradle that's a good pickup point for uh, for us in the airplane. These are also good pickup points in the airplane. Uh, EGR valve that gets capped off. There's also an EGR passage right here. I think that could be uh, tapped with a pipe th pipe plug and uh, threaded to eliminate that. Um, I did talk to Jerome Smith from Raven Redrives. You know everybody knows he's launching a Honda Fit. Uh, firewall forward package. His engine is upright like this as compared to Viking Subaru. Theirs is laid horizontal. <clears throat> Jerome likes to use belt drives and he's had awesome success with that. I talked to him on the phone. He said at this point right off the bat all they're going to do is release firewall forward packages. Uh, once he has a few of those out they will be possibly he said coming into the market with uh, bits and pieces you can buy like a redrive uh, and whatnot. So I w I'm on game for that. I'm a many, probably three, four years out from having to worry about um, where to get engine parts right now. But I'll build my own intake manifold. Um, it'll probably only stick out four or five inches. And uh, bear with me here, I'll grab a tape measure and I'll take some measurements for you guys. I know you guys just love my camera work. All right, from the bench to the highest part of the motor, it's coming in at 23 inches. From the front of the motor to the back of the motor, roughly 18 and a half inches. From what I see, I guess it's going to be right there 
So the widest part of the thermostat housing is coming in at 16 inches. So that's my take on the Honda Fit. If you guys have any questions, you can email me. I can take some measurements for you if you need whatever. Um, there are companies out there also making billet lightweight harmonic balancers. Um, not really a big fan of that idea. I know this is kind of heavy for what we want, but there's rubber cushioning in here that takes up uh, vibration and harmonics, and uh, I'll be leaving that just the way it is. I don't want to experiment with uh, harmonic vibrations. So, yeah. That's the factory crank sensor, which I will not need also. I can make a plug for that. Another uh, heater core hose. So, that's my video. Hope this answers some questions for some people. And, uh, yeah. And I should mention that um, this engine model is the L15A7, which is in the vehicles from 2009 to the present. I believe that the 2014s have a different engine, um, but I can't be for sure. But I believe the 2014 engines are direct injected with some more fancy crap on there that <clears throat> really doesn't do us any good. But uh, yeah, so you want to look for a car with a from 2009 to 2013, preferably with an automatic transmission. The only reason I say that is because that's a little light flywheel. Um, the manual transmission has a pressure plate, uh, and it's a considerably heavier chunk. I'd say it's another 15 pounds heavier than an automatic flywheel. So if you had your choice, it's going to be a low mileage 2009 to 2013 Honda Fit with the L15. A7, which it'll say right there, this camera sucks. Uh, what else was I going to say? I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Hmm. What was I going to say? I cannot remember. I'm sure as soon as I turn off the camera, I'll remember. Um, yeah, so I'll just do one more walk around and try to think here. Oh, I know what I was going to calculate here. Um, we, as pilots, fly... Um, we calculate engine time in hours, because obviously we can't do it in miles. So I thought to myself, okay, if this has 17,153 miles, we know it didn't, spend, it didn't spend its life at 60 miles an hour, so I took what I believe is a pretty con conservative number, 30 miles an hour. So I took 1,000, or I'm sorry, 17,153, divided it by 30. That gave me engine hours. And then I added 10% for idle time. I think that's, I don't know, an okay way to do it. There's really no way to do it. Uh, theoretically, I guess. Maybe there is, I don't know. But uh, yeah, there you go, guys. Hope this answers some questions. See you, bye.